Alrighty, let's see. Are we lucky? Emerald pack. Let's go to the left. <gasps> First try, baby. Ja Morant. <laughs> what a run. What a run. Uh, I guess we're just going to roll with it. I had my headset in, coincidentally, for this... Uh, game that i played in limited my very first game in limited and we got the ring literally on our first go so yeah with that being said a little bit of an impromptu start but what's going on jan moses here from broth cindy bringing you another nba 2k22 my team video now the point of this video essentially is to serve as like a mini podcast before the big podcast drops next week hopefully uh with my boy harry um back in madden when uh i used to play madden i used to make youtube videos where i would essentially do journal entries when anything major happened in mutt related to something that i did or something that the game dropped um and i wanted to bookmark it as an event to kind of look back on down the road and i want to bring that back for my team here and there because I do think it's kind of a good way for me to keep track of something that happened in the game that maybe I want to look back on in a couple of months and be reminded of how much fun I had or, you know, just kind of document something big that I did. Like when I got to Gary Payton um, about 10 days ago now, I uploaded the video of me getting Gary and gave my hot take on... Um, what I thought of the card essentially. And now that it's been about a week and a half since I've gotten him, you know, I've given him a diamond contract. I've um, put a shoe on him. I'm committed to him. If for no other reason besides the fact that I grinded so hard for this Gary Payton, and whenever I look at this card, even though we are going to definitely get better point guards than him in the near future, I, I can look at this card and be reminded of the grind, of the work that I put in to get him. And for that reason alone, I thought he was worthy of getting a diamond contract. So I'm going to talk about Gary Payton a little bit more um, towards the end of the video, I guess. But I kind of want to piggyback off of what I just said regarding the last video that I uploaded and talk about the team because... I made a few changes. I got rid of Trey Young, Miles Turner, and Tobias Harris because I had a feeling that with, you know, as of last week, looking into the near future, Thanksgiving on the horizon, season three on the horizon, it made sense for me to sell off these diamonds that were going for, I mean, in Miles Turner's case, I sold him for 75K. I sold Trey Young for 48K. If we take a look at Trey, I'm sure Trey is so much cheaper now. Um, not only because we've gotten some better point guards, but we've gotten a new set of packs in the store for Black Friday. Oh, why am I going so high? Uh, we got some new packs in the store for Black Friday, and Trey Young right now, I think he's going to be like, what, 40K or so? Yeah, so 40K, 37K, 38K. Uh, and the Miles Turner, he should be, I'm assuming 60K would be my guess. Uh, I'm just doing this out of... My own curiosity. Uh, but I sold a bunch of these players. Uh, Miles Turner is actually much less. Holy cow. My, oh, my God. Is he 45K? Oh, my Lord. Miles Turner is dirt cheap. Well, what also helps, again, are those Black Friday packs that we just got. But Miles Turner is half the price of what I sold him for. Holy shit. Oh, my God. He's like a third. That's incredible. That to me is insane. This Miles Turner is a really good center. I just don't like him because of the release, personally. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. That is a great value right there, man. That's a great value. If I was still playing Unlimited for Gary Payton, I would go and buy this Miles Turner. Honestly, I would. Um, but even with me selling all those players, I'm still very low on the MT. And the main reason for that is... We got this slew of Thanksgiving-related events that they gave us. Um, they gave us, you know, players that we can earn through Triple Threat Online and Offline. My team, Unlimited and Limited. Because I didn't end up needing to play 
five limited games in a row. I'm just not going to bother trying to get the Bobby Jones diamond. But we got a Nick Vucevic for unlimited winning five of those games in a row. We got a Steve Francis for winning 10 of those in a row, which you can see I got the Steve Francis right here. Mike Conley was for winning 10 triple threat offline games in a row. And then what they did on Monday is bring back LaFrance. He's my first ever triple threat offline vault reward card. I had not gotten one through my first like 500 games. And then I pull LaFrance three times in like 20 or 30 games. How crazy is that? Um, we actually have, speaking of triple threat offline rewards, we have an event this weekend similar to the event we had around Halloween weekend where we had Vince Carter on the triple threat offline boards and Anthony Davis on the online boards. We now have Pink Diamond, Steph Curry, and Diamond DeMar DeRozan on the triple threat online boards. But on the offline boards, you have D-Rob out there. And I know the odds of you seeing D-Rob are super slim, but I need to take a shot at it. Even with those super slim chances, I need a shot at that D-Rob. I want that David Robinson we also got this Diamond Moments Scary Terry on Tuesday. Um, and it was really clutch that they dropped this along with the Mystic Packs that we got on Wednesday. Because with the amount of XP that you can get from the agendas, I was able to hit level 40, as you can see in the top right. Which means we get that and that for the random Thanksgiving events. I'll talk about what that is in a second. We get Ruby Larry Bird, another random reward, I think, for Unlimited. We get 1,000 MT. But there you go. Kevin Garnett is on the team now, which I did not think I was going to get Kevin Garnett because I very casually grinded XP this season, basically. I mean, I didn't even really care for the XP grind um, up until, like, I don't know, a week ago. Basically, and then when I saw how close I was and after I got Gary Payton, I was like, well, why not just try for that Kevin Garnett? Because as much as I dislike Kevin Garnett, given, you know, he's a Boston Celtic, excuse me, you know, he trashed Lala Anthony. And even though Melo's not on my team anymore, and I don't think Lala and Melo are together anymore. Um, at that moment, I did not appreciate those comments that Kevin Garnett threw um, basically towards my guy, Carmelo Anthony's wife. So anyways, point being. I don't like this Kevin Garnett as a person, and I don't like the team that he played for for a good stretch of his career. But in my team, this is still a very good card. He fits what I like defensively, um, which is like a really tall player that can really move the you know move his legs well laterally, I guess. Um, and I think he can shoot the ball pretty well. Like my boy Deuce has got him earlier in the week and spoke about how his release is actually not as bad as a lot of people are making it out to be. So. Um, yeah, all in all, it was really a great week. I didn't even get to show the uh, diamond contracts, but I bought a lot of them. Uh, I wanted to do the math before I uh, showed off all the diamond contracts, but you can see I have a lot here. Um, I bought, let me see, I wrote it down on my phone somewhere. I think I bought 22. I have 22 diamond contracts that I paid anywhere from 11,250 MT up to 16,000 MT for. And I think right now, if we were to check the prices, I'm sure they're still like very cheap. Like you can go on this filter right now and sit on it. And I think if you wait like 10 minutes, you can probably get five or more diamond contracts for like under 13K, maybe. Um, today, the daily login, if you did it every week, the, 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 the spin that you get for it gave you a shot at a diamond contract, which is why I sat on the filter. I think this morning alone, I bought five diamond contracts all between like 12.5 and 13K, which I'm very, very happy with. Um, so you can just like sit on this filter. You can probably sit on the diamond shoe colorway filter and you can make MT on that. I know some snipers on YouTube like that filter. I'm not a big sniper really this year. I just wanted to target the, the diamond contracts because I figure a month from now when more kids are playing the game after Christmas comes out, diamond contracts should be worth a little more. I'm hopeful that they go back up to like 19 to 20K and then I'll have a bunch of diamond contracts to flip for what's going to basically be 5K profit or 4K profit a pop roughly if you were to average it out. Um, so if that were to happen... That'll sit me at roughly, I want to say after tax, 80 to 90K in profit, which I'm definitely cool with. So um, anyways, I want to go through all these players and rip all these packs finally. Um, we can also get 
this uh, Hall of Fame badge pack, which is a result of getting all these different Thanksgiving collectibles. Uh, this is a thing that they dropped, I think, on Thursday. Yeah, yesterday, Thanksgiving, obviously. Um, speaking of, hope you guys that are watching this had a very nice Thanksgiving with your friends and your family. Um, you know, I'm obviously thankful for, you know, for you guys because the way my YouTube channel works with Shiz basically is whenever I upload um, 2K content, the people that do comment on it, whether it's in the comment section or on Snapchat or on, you know, the Twitter DMs, um, you go, you're all guys that I've been, you know, rocking with and maintain some level of communication with for the greater part of half a decade. I mean, you know, I was talking to Harry yesterday and, you know, Harry mentioned that we've basically been friends for like six years. And that to me is insane because six years is a really, really long time. Um, are those all the Thanksgiving cards? But anyways, point being is I'm very grateful for every single one of you guys. Um, so, you know, thank you for, you know, for rocking with me for as long as you've had, even when I wasn't playing 2K. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, this is a completed set now. So now we're going to spend two minutes like an idiot trying to find where exactly the turkey set is because <laughs> i have no idea i'm not going to go too crazy on this because it's going to be a hall of fame badge and i'm not going to spend two minutes trying to search for what's going to ultimately end up being a um a what's it called a hall of fame post hook oh there it is cool so we can complete this now i'm assuming the badge is in my unopened packs Let's see. Yeah, I'm assuming it is because now it's glowing. We'll start with that. Let's see if we can get lucky with this. Um, I saw a lot of people on Reddit complaining that, that they didn't want to spend two hours grinding for what could ultimately end up being a crappy Hall of Fame badge. My thing is, even if it's crappy, the way players are being sold right now, like the rate that players are being sold for when you add random Hall of Fame badges is just insane. Like, Mouse in the House, that's a pretty crappy badge, but I can throw that on a player if I wanted to buy a player. And I can flip them for, like, you know, if, if I put a bunch of these Hall of Fame badges on there and flip them for, like, an egregious amount of MT. Um, but anyways, we can start ripping these packs now for these reward players. Uh, I do still want to talk about the grind for Gary. Uh, as you guys saw in that previous video, I went 53 and 17 in my grind for Gary Payton. And I think 53 wins is the minimum number of wins that you need if you want to get Gary, because I think I had a single run through each tier, essentially. Gary is a phenomenal card. I used him in Triple Threat Online. I used him a little bit in Unlimited, because again, for that Nikola Vucevic, who we will be ripping uh, in a pack momentarily, um, I wanted to use him in those game modes because I wanted to get you know the five wins in a row for Nick Vucevic triple threat online I mean is going to be the primary format that I'm going to use them in when it comes to online gameplay because I don't plan on grinding unlimited ever again for uh whoever the reward is going to be because it's a really long grind and that is the main reason why I'm here to tell you that Gary Payton and in my opinion any card that they drop as a reward for completing the Galaxy Opal tier in Unlimited is just flat out not worth it. The reward boxes on the way to the Galaxy Opal tier are actually not bad. Um, you know, the problem is when the baseline for rewards that you're setting is super low, like the rewards that we get from Triple Threat offline now are just god awful. Ever since they, you know, fixed it where you don't eat points towards your 100 for taking an L in Triple Threat Online. They nerfed the ball drops you get at the top end from five down to three. And it really does feel like the odds of you seeing, you know, the Diamond Paul Silas or even now the Rod Strickland are practically zero, um, which really does suck because it feels like you're punishing us because you took out something from your game mode that really shouldn't have ever been there. Like, why am I being punished for winning a game 22 to 20, you know, like I'm dogging it out and I'm coming out with a clutch win. It really didn't make a lick of sense to me, but whatever it is, what it is, 
the point being is the triple threat online rewards are not great. Triple threat offline rewards are not great for the most part. Um, and, you know, the limited rewards are fine, but you're not going to grind limited. Once you get your ring, I don't think most people are touching that game mode. You know, the only time I saw anybody grind limited after getting their ring was for the few people that wanted to get Bobby Jones. And if that's the case, cool, more power to you. Bobby Jones is a great card defensively, doesn't offer you much offensively, and we don't really get those kind of events often at all. I mean, that is like an end of season event. I don't think we're going to see another event like we got with Vucevic and Steve Francis and Amethyst Mike Conley and Bobby Jones until the end of season three come, what, mid-January? So... I just don't see that happening, unfortunately, which leaves us with unlimited. And with unlimited, you get, you know, diamond contracts, I think, at least one, maybe two. You get a Hall of Fame badge. You get a bunch of bronze and silver badges, which carried value for some point with gold badges. You get a bunch of contracts. You get Amethyst players. Like, I got lucky. I got uh, the Amethyst Jimmy Butler primetime card. And then Jimmy Butler ended up getting a moments agenda, so his value skyrocketed, like, 300 percent he was like five to six k i think and i sold him for like 16 something so um that was really nice but besides that i mean you're not really getting anything that's worth a lot of value it just comes down to you really having to want to play the game like i am a 5v5 player in my team at my core when it comes to this game mode i genuinely enjoy that and for that reason i grinded for gary payton who's also a card that I've historically had great success with in my my team career, you know, dating back to 2K13 my team, which I think is the first iteration of my team. You know, not to make myself sound like an old head and date myself, but I love that my team. That was a great year in terms of like, you know, there was no baseline, so not only was there nothing for me to compare it to, but there was no way for 2K to make that game mode that much of a money grab because, you know, they didn't know how much of a cash cow my team could be whereas you look at it now just you know to take a break from the pack opening for a second you know you have these packs that came out and these are in my opinion the undisputed best packs that we've gotten in my team to date because you have every single pink diamond to date along with a bunch of diamonds and amethysts and rubies like these are really good packs and if you look at the odds uh which i don't fully remember how to do i think it's, yeah, there it is right there you have a 14% or well, you have a yeah 14% chance to pull a diamond basically um and a 2% chance to pull a pink diamond i mean diamonds are going to tank in value um so if you want to buy a diamond this is the time to do it um but you know compared to back then we didn't have this kind of stuff point being um you know going back to unlimited for a second here um unless you absolutely love playing unlimited unless you love the 5v5 feel um and unless you really like gary payton it really doesn't make much sense for you to grind 53 games to get him i mean you're not even really grinding xp on the way there you're not taking any of these promo players that we get on a friday like you know maybe like say for a guy like a marcus smart you're not really taking any of these players that we get into unlimited because you're going to get your cheeks clapped you're going to play against someone you know as good as marcus smart is you're going to play against someone that has you know sign Steph Curry and he's gonna sauce you up and he's gonna make you feel like shit and there's nothing you can really do about it doesn't matter who you have out there I mean I'm sure I'm gonna get cooked with Gary Payton because I'm honestly just not that good anymore I used to be a god I, I thought in playing road to the playoffs back in 2k17 my win loss I think was like 311 and 11 something crazy like that and I was damn proud of it like I was at my peak when it came to my team online wise at least um back then and the meta has changed drastically since i used to play and the quality of the average opponent in unlimited has changed drastically and i think that's just more so because my team is no longer a game mode that cat that caters towards casuals and as a result of that the online atmosphere is filled with people that are going to run tactics that i'm going to find toxic because i'm not used to it like i'm not used to being you know, full court pressed and playing people that are baiting the passing lanes aggressively every single game. You know, it's not like the handful of opponents that you play in your unlimited run towards Gary Payton that are going to play you like that. It's going to be a healthy dosage of full court press and three hunting and, 
uh, baiting the passing lanes, and it's it's really tough. And when you factor all that in, it just makes it really difficult for me to go to you and say, oh, you should grind for Gary Payton because, you know, it's worth the grind. If you love Gary Payton, go for it. But otherwise, you really shouldn't. Um, because honestly, if for no other reason other than we're going to probably get a guy like a Magic Johnson probably in like a couple of weeks, and if they give him a good three-pointer, he's going to be better than, you know, than the Gary Payton. And I mean, we got a Jason Kidd. I'm not going to compare the stats, but um, you can do it on on 2KDB. Just compare the uh, Gary Payton to the Jason Kidd. And the only main differences are the defensive badges favor Gary Payton. And Gary Payton has the ability to dunk, and he can post fade, um, which the post fade on him is very underrated. By the way, I've had a lot of success post fading with Gary Payton in Triple Threat Online, and I love it. So, uh, as we get KG, which I'm still shocked that we got KG, just incredible. Um, why don't we put together a quick squad um, as I provide my closing thoughts here on Gary Payton? Um, ultimately, I think I think Gary Payton is still top two, top three point guard in the game right now. I mean, I showed the ratings last week when I got him. Um, he's phenomenal. Like, he really is incredible. I just think so many people, first of all, don't have a play style with their point guard that caters towards having a guy like Gary Payton. Like, if you like to dance around screens and pop threes, go get a Steph Curry, go get a Trey Young, go get a Jason Terry even. I think you'll have more success with them than a Gary Payton. Because while Gary Payton is the more complete point guard compared to the three names I just mentioned, he can't really do what I just mentioned as effectively as those three guys. Um, and I think because of that, because of the grind, it's just it's not worth it, man. But I'm so happy that I did it because, like I said, I love Gary Payton in my team. And now I can look back at this card and I can think back to, you know, the crazy grind that I had to get that card and how I'm probably going to never do it again. So this Gary Payton is going to be my only unlimited reward probably <clears throat> for the rest of the season. Now, I don't really know who I'm going to really have in my lineup. As of right now, I'm going to put Kevin Garnett here and I'm going to put uh, Nikola Vucevic here. <clears throat> and now off the bench, we're going to have John Morant for now. But I will tell you, I am kind of tempted to try out this Steve Francis a little bit because I don't think this Francis is actually that much worse than Ja. Ja needs a lot of badges. Um, ja needs clamps. So I don't think he has clamps. Um, he does not. So I need to give him clamps. Does Steve Francis have clamps? He does not have clamps. Okay. Well, that is unfortunate. Does he have it on bronze or something? I forgot. Maybe he's not. I don't know. <laughs> that is very... Yeah, they both have the ability to get clamps, but they don't have it currently. So we're going to stick with John Moran for now because I didn't grind three weeks for John Moran to never see the, the floor for me. Um, who do I want for a two-guard off the bench? Uh, I don't even know if I really have one. Again, I sold a lot of players, and then I invested in uh, diamond contracts like crazy. So I guess for now, we'll just put Eddie Jones here because I think this Eddie Jones is going to be the closest thing I'm going to get to a J.R. Smith card this year. Um, I'm sorry, no. That's O.J. Mayo. I apologize. Um, maybe. Actually, no, I apologize. No, no. I think it's going to be Eddie Jones. I think Eddie Jones has the J.R. Smith release. I could be wrong. Um, but it just feels like I'm playing with J.R. Smith again, which I thoroughly enjoy because I love me some J.R. Smith. Um, I could go with Bruce Bowen, but I'm going to put... Mikhail Bridges, because first of all, he's a hollow, which is cool. But second of all, Mikhail Bridges has Hall of Fame Interceptor, which is fantastic. Who do I want at the four? Uh, oh, Rocco, probably for now. And then at center, I think I'm going to have to go with LaFrance, because as much as I love Uncle Nick, and I will never sell this Nikola, Vuc uh, sorry, Nikola Jokic because of the work that he put in for me in Unlimited. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just as a small sample size for how good this card was, my last gameplay that I uploaded about maybe two weeks ago, uh, Jokic goes off. Uh, I think he has 22 points on 8 of 8 shooting, and a lot of those shots are down the stretch in the clutch with like under 2 to go. So... I love that Jokic. Ultimately, the main reason why I cannot go with Jokic over LaFrance 
is going to be the defense, I guess. Like, it's not like LaFrance is going to be great on D. He's not. I mean, he's slower than Jokic straight away. But, I mean, the 65 lateral quickness versus the 49, I mean, it is an absolute struggle. To be honest, I could probably go with uh, Wang Zhiji over here and maybe I'd have a better time because I think this Wang Zhiji doesn't really give me that much less than LaFrance does, does offensively. And he's much faster and he's better laterally. Uh, I guess the main difference is going to be the badges. Uh, I mean, this LaFrance, I mean, Hall of Fame blinders, corner specialist, and catch and shoot are amazing. And I'm going to keep him just because I want to try him out anyways. But Wong is knocking on the door. Speaking of, you may as well just put him here, I guess. And there, I got Dino also, but that Dino is not that good yet. Can't really shoot the three ball. I will put Wong here. Uh, we'll put Walt Frazier because Walt Frazier gave us some good minutes. And we will put who else? Who else wants to come in? Uh, let's put some. Oh, you know, we'll put Uncle Nick just because we can. Um, and there you have it. There's my my mini pod. I think I'm gonna call it the Blueprint series for now, but it could end up changing. Uh, Deuce's recommended Jan's journey. I kind of like that. Um, but we're gonna stick with Blueprint series for this episode. And then if I do record another one and I upload it to YouTube. We'll see what I end up calling it. Uh, I don't even know how long this video ended up being. But if you stay through the end, I really appreciate you. And I'm thankful for you and, you know, all of you guys. Um, so thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And until next time, I'll see you later.